So in this video, we are going to discuss about continuity of functions of two variables. So in this video, we are going to discuss four problems. They will be slightly difficult to understand at an initial level, but a practice of such problems will help you to understand how to check the continuity of functions of two variables. So let me start with a very simple problem. So this is f of x y is equal to x cube plus y cube upon x square plus y square when x and y are not zero and when x and y are zero zero then I am getting the answer is how much the function has value equal to zero and I have to check the continuity of this function. So when I see such question what should I do? I should first see that at which point there is a difference of the function. So at the point zero you see that at the point zero the function is something different and whenever the point is not zero then function is something different. So which is the point that at which you have to discuss the continuity? It essentially remains that you have to basically discuss the continuity at the point 0 0 right now what is the definition of a continuous function now we all know that for a continuous function at a point I if I want a function to be continuous at a point what should happen the limit of the function so which is nothing but limit f of x y this is limit of the function at which point are we going to discuss the continuity we are going to discuss the continuity at point 0 0 so at the limit of the function at 0 0 should be equal to how much should be equal to the value of the function what is the value of the function at 0 0 the value of the function at 0 0 is given to be 1 suppose it is 1 here then what is the value of the function at 0 0 the value of the function at 0 0 means f of 0 0 okay this is the value of the function at 0 0 this this is equal to how much given to us this is given to be equal to 0 so we have to prove this that limit of the function is equal to how much is equal to the value of the function means it should come out equal to how much it should come out to be zero if i can show this then it means that this function is continuous at which point it is continuous at the point zero zero now let us try to find the limit of this function at x y tending to zero and what should be my answer my answer should be equal to how much zero so limit x y tending to zero zero of the function f of x y which is x cube plus y cube divided by x square plus y square so we have to evaluate this limit now okay in our previous lectures in our previous videos we have seen that how to evaluate such limits right there i have taught you a trick saying that whenever you have x square plus y square in the denominator it is always suggested to substitute what you are always supposed to substitute x equal to r cos theta and y equal to r sin theta. We have solved some problems related to the substitution in the previous videos. right? So this means that therefore x square plus y square will become r square and, okay, and we know that x is also tending to 0, y is also tending to 0. So r also tends to 0. Theta, we cannot say anything about theta. right? So we know that r also tends to 0. So this limit gets converted into limit r tending to 0 of the denominator is x square plus y square is just r square. The numerator is x cube means r cube sin cos cube theta plus y cube will become r cube sin cube theta. So I can take the r cube common and what will I left with inside? I will have a cos cube theta plus r cube sin cube theta so I'm taking r cube common r cube sin cube theta and this cos cube theta and sin cube theta has nothing to do with the limit so I will just pull it out of the limit because it has no r so it has cos cube theta plus sin cube theta and what am I left in the limit I'm left in the limit of what limit r tending to 0 of this r square and r cube r square will cancel so I'm just left with what limit of r as r tends to 0 and we know that this is equal to how much this is equal to 0 so this complete product is going to become to be equal to 0 but this 0 is the same as the so limit of the function is same as how much is same as the value of the function therefore this function f is continuous at 0 0 okay now the next three problems that we are going to discuss they are not going to be as easy as this problem so 
let me just recall quickly whenever you want to show a function is continuous try to prove that the limit of the function is equal to how much value of the function whatever technique you have with you try to prove that they are equal okay now it happens that most of the times functions given to us are discontinuous okay so you just have to think about how am i going to evaluate this limit if i cannot evaluate this limit if the limit does not exist then it will mean that the limit of the function is not equal to the value of the function in that case the function will not become continuous so let's see the next three problems which are somewhat like having discontinuous functions so let's see them now so this is the second problem now uh, it is f of x y equal to x cube plus y cube upon x minus y when x and y are not equal to zero and if x and y are equal to zero then it is equal to zero so i have to again check the continuity of the function means i have to check limit of the function uh, is it equal to the value of the function this is what i have to check is it equal to f of zero zero how much is f of zero zero given to us it is given zero zero this limit i must be able to check is it coming to be zero zero okay now here we know that we cannot put x equal to r cos theta and y equal to r sin theta why because there is no x square plus y square okay that is our standard trick which i have taught in previous class so i will not put x equal to r cos theta and x y equal to r sin theta because x square plus y square is missing right now can we put some substitution over here like y equal to mx y equal to mx cube or something like that okay if you try the substitution y equal to mx okay then then what will happen then this will uh, give you what this limit will become what x cube plus m cube x cube upon a, y, x minus y will become x minus y is nothing but mx x minus mx and then this limit will only depend on x and then this limit will give you limit x tending to 0 of x will cancel and i will have so let me pull out x common here let me do that step x cube into 1 plus m cube and this x cube and x this 1 plus m cube and 1 minus m has nothing to do with the limit right so it will be 1 upon m cube plus limit uh, plus minus 1 upon m limit x tending to 0 and x cube and x x will become x square and this limit will become how much this limit will become zero and therefore the final limit is equal to how much this will this will become zero so if i use this path this limit is equal to how much equal to zero but as we know from all our previous lectures that whenever i use such a substitution y is equal to mx it usually happens that we get the answer that the limit depends on m and then for and therefore that limit is not existing right so this means that if i use this path this limit is equal to 0 which is equal to the value of the function so so should i stop here so no this may not be the correct path there may be some other path for which this limit will depend on m and it does not exist okay so you just have you just have to take care that whenever you are using a path and suppose the limit exists okay which is something like zero here then you should not say that my job is over okay if i can find a path for which this limit does not exist then that will surely tell me that this limit of the function will not be equal to what will not be equal to zero okay or it, it, it will not be equal to the value of the function so this path that i have chosen is really not a good path so can we now think of some better path for which this limit of x cube plus y cube upon x minus y does not exist now we have to be very careful so let me write it limit x cube plus y cube upon x minus y and i'm thinking of this limit x y tending to what tending to 0 0 okay see if i can replace this x minus y by something which is uh, which is very close to x cube or very close to y cube the numerator the denominator becomes very simple i hope you understand what i'm trying to say i'm trying to say that limit of whatever i'm not writing here so what is in my mind is i am saying have it that just put x minus y is equal to what is equal to m x cube so x minus y will be completely replaced by what will be completely replaced by y just m x cube so this will mean it is m x cube in the denominator so from two terms i got a single term why i got a single term it is easy to cancel 
right? So if x minus y is equal to mx cube, this means that y will be equal to how much from this expression? Y will be will be equal to m x cube plus x. So wherever there is a y, I'm going to substitute what? I'm going to substitute m x cube plus sorry plus x m x cube plus x. Okay. So y is equal to m x cube plus x. So x cube will remain as it is plus y cube. What will be y cube? I know y is equal to m x cube plus x. So what will be y cube? Y cube will be the cube of everything m x cube plus x. Okay. And now this will do my job. So limit will uh, is only for x tending to zero because there is no y in the picture, right? Because of this, what has happened is because of such a smart substitution, what has happened? You can pull out x cube common from the numerator, right? Why? Because if I simplify the numerator, it is x cube plus from this entire whole cube. If I just pull out x inside the bracket, see these terms have x common. Then what will I have? I will have m x square plus one, right? And denominator I have m x cube as it is. Yet I am supposed to, I cannot cancel this x cube with x cube directly. I hope you understand that. So this is limit x tending to zero, and uh, denominator is m x cube. <coughs> Here I have x cube plus. Now this will be x cube into m x square plus one. The whole cube. So I have separated the cubic power to both of both the terms. And now I can pull out what? I can pull out x cube common from that. So limit x tending to zero of m x cube into x cube into bracket. What will I get? One plus m x square plus one the whole cube. Now this x cube and this x cube has cancelled. And when I substitute x equal to zero in this limit, what will be remaining in this? This will be one plus x is zero, so this term will also become zero. And I'll have this have a one cube, so it will become just one. One cube is one upon what? Upon m. So the limit I've got is how much? Two upon m. So when I use this path, x minus y is equal to m x cube, or the path y is equal to m x cube plus x. They are the same. Okay, then this limit becomes how much? This limit becomes 2 upon m. I hope you cannot really easily identify by looking at this question. You cannot say that let me choose a path y equal to m x cube plus x. It is not natural to see how this came. But you can see, simply think of that. Let me replace this complete x minus y by some power of x cube. So the x cubes will cancel at some point of stage. Here it happened that. So what I did, so I replace x minus y by mx cube and then I got that automatically x cube cancelled and whatever remained was a, a person which depends on n, m and therefore what happened? This limit that I am talking, limit x y tending to 0, 0, this does not exist, right? Since it does not exist, it cannot be equal to the value of the function and therefore this function is not a continuous function. I hope this example is understood. Okay, a similar example we will do after this. Okay, now the third problem is a very tricky problem. So I'm going to take f of x y equal to y square upon x square plus y square minus y, and I'm going to write the value of the function is equal to how much zero, and I have to check the continuity of this function, right? So now here comes the power of continuity. Now you see in the previous lectures we have learned about repeated limits. We have learned learned about simultaneous limits, we have learned about limits along different different paths, how you are going to check whether they are, uh, if I have given a path, what will be the limit along that path. Usually it depends on some m and then we say that the limit does not exist, right? But for a continuous function, now we have, this is a very important thing that is going to come in the picture because of this example. Now what we will do is that we will choose two different paths in this problem. And we will show that if I choose one path, I will get one answer. If I choose another path, I will get a different answer. And then I will say that because these two answers are different, 
okay this function cannot be a continuous function at the point 0 0 so what is continuity ensure us the continuity ensures us that if I choose any path the answer must be equal to the value of the function okay if it is continuous at 0 0 okay if, if this if this function is continuous at 0 0 if you give me any path which is passing through 0 0 the answer you must get is equal to how much you must get equal to 0 here what will happen I will choose two different paths and along one path I will get one different answer along one path I will get different answer and then we will say that this cannot happen in the case of continuity right so how will I choose those two different paths is by looking at the denominator you see denominator is always a problematic person right so this denominator x square plus y square minus y I can group into two different paths okay I can first I will say okay fine I will take what I will say it x square plus y square and next part I will con concentrate is what I will concentrate on x cube minus y okay so I am going to concentrate on x square plus y square this group and in the second part I will do this means concentrate means what means in the first part I will say is that let x square plus y square be just equal to how much be just equal to zero by this thing I am trying to say that just choose a path y square equal to what minus x square so we we'll choose this path okay this be the path when I choose this path the limit of the function x y tending to 0 0 I will not write the limit of what what will I write in the numerator I am going to say y square is as it is and what will happen in the denominator if I choose y square equal to minus x square this x square and y square will cancel each other because y square is minus x square and I will just have what I will just have a minus y in the denominator and here I will write limit of what limit of y tending to 0 y square upon minus y do not put it as 0 upon 0 many students make the same mistake so cancel that y and then you will write limit y tending to 0 of just y is remaining with the minus sign and this limit is coming to be how much this limit is coming to be 0 so if I choose this path y square equal to minus x square I am getting the limit equal to 0 now let me choose a path a which is which is connected in the fashion of x square minus y so I hope now you get what is my path so let the path be what x square minus y make it equal to 0 means x square is equal to what x square is y choose this path and now you see what will happen to this path okay I'm going to choose the path x square equal to y so that limit will become limit of y square numerator I'm going to keep it as it is upon in the denominator x square minus y will be replaced by 0 and I'm just left with a y square because x square minus y has become 0 so I'm left, left with y square upon y square and limit of what y tending to 0 don't put 0 upon 0 they cancel and then you get limit y tending to 0 of 1 and the limit is how much the limit is 1 because there is no y inside the limit so along one path I am getting the limit is 0 along another path x square equal to y I am getting the limit of the function is equal to 1 this mm -hmm. cannot happen in continuity if the function is continuous then what should happen you ma no matter which path you choose all the answers must come to be equal to what the value of the function but here it doesn't happen along this path it is equal to the value of the function yes zero but along a different path it is not equal to the value of the function so this means that this function cannot be a continuous function so with this I hope now the concept of continuity is un understood how to check continuity of the functions we will upload some more videos which will have problems on continuity of functions